In 2023, we already started our uh, launch program uh, with the launch of SSLV D2. As you know, the first mission, we had a problem. We are not able to safely inject the satellite in a stable orbit. Whereas in the second launch, uh, we were able to successfully place the satellite in orbit. Three such of satellites were placed in orbit and all of them are doing very well. So the, in the second mission, SSLV has come out very well and we have a uh, plan to increase its production and launches in the coming years. But the most important thing this year are the, the launches which are now going yes. to come. At Sri Harikota, Sadish Saman Space Center, we are ready with the launch of uh, preparation for LVM3. One Web India 2 mission, which is the second launch of the series of One Web launch launches, which we are committed through NSIL. So, this launch is likely to take place on 26th of this month. Now, we were also preparing for the launch of PSLV for a commercial launch uh, purpose, and that launch was though scheduled earlier, but it looks like it will go to uh, April middle, and that will be the launch of PSLV C. 55. Uh, we are also planning additional four to five launches of PSL in the, this year itself before March of next year. Uh, the most important thing we are going to do this year is the launch of uh, Chandrayaan 3. And the Chandrayaan 3 satellite is almost ready after all its uh, important test and only minor final tests are pending. And uh, all that is going very well even today. So after that, preparation then we are trying for a launch in possibly in June July time frame June end is the right time date of course based on the schedule and slot availability we may oh, launch Chandrayaan 3 and there is another important mission called Aditya L1 yes Aditya L1 is a mission to look at uh, understand the Sun and its activities by placing the satellite in a halo orbit at uh, Lagrangian point L1 yes. and that launch will take place through PSLV mm -hmm. currently the satellite is also in the integration phase and its critical payloads are already delivered. Mm -hmm. So these two important scientific missions are scheduled this year. Uh, it's all on track. The pro yes. You would have seen in the news that we have delivered the crew module, the first of crew module yes. and all systems are currently tested and completed. Now this year also we want to do a launch of our NAVIC next series of satellite. We have five more satellites called NVS01 to NVS05 being built. These are new generation navigation satellites with uh, new features. One is called L1 band, which is uh, civilian mobile band, which is which is not there in the current navigation system. Yes. Then uh, we have secured code for strategic users, which is more uh, spoof proof. You cannot uh, make it non-available. So with these two features, we are launching the new Navic using GSLU rocket. Okay. You know, GSL rocket had a failure in the last mission, so yes. we want to come back and launch uh, for a successful launch of GSLV this year. Mm -hmm. So this year, uh, if I count, I think you could have counted already how many yes. launches are there. But of course, these are in our planning. Sometimes uh, some of this planning may not work well. Uh, sometimes it has to be postponed based on some criticality that can come. But doesn't matter. I think uh, every month we have a launch. That's all yes, what it, that is it comes yes. to. Then another big ticket mission for us this year is the Gaganyan's abort mission, which we call test vehicle D1, TV D1 mission. In this mission, we will be using a new rocket called test vehicle, which is already realized. Uh, then we have to place the crew module, uh, the, where the human craft, plus its crew escape system and the entire algorithm and electronics, and then launch it to a altitude of uh, some 14 kilometers and trigger an abort or some, some sort of failure mm -hmm. and the failure this should escape and come out without any problem into the sea. Yes. So this is a mission. So this mission we will do this year. Mm -hmm. Now that, that, Russian, training, leg that Russian leg is over, now the, the training are of various kinds because we are building the crew modulates. They are not trained for flying in a already non-aircraft, no? Yes. The aircraft, uh, the craft for that is also being built. Yes. So their role is to help us build it mm -hmm. because they have already experienced with the Russian, Russian way of doing it. Mm -hmm. So in our design, they are part of it. So they help us in designing the crew module, their, their elements in that, etc. They part. And they are going through class sessions. 
in which various experts will come and take classes, etc. And then we have a simulator in which we will simulate how to uh, interact with the crew module, understand it. So these are the tasks which, which they are doing now. And there is some uh, special training which will happen little later. They will go back to Russia a little later and undergo some specialized uh, training uh, towards the end of uh, when we are ready for flight. No, we already declared that we will try to complete some of the major work this year and next year. Possibly next year end uh, is what we are trying now. Of course, all depends on the success of uh, whatever we are doing now. No, Aditya L1, if I speak about Aditya L1, the essential part of Aditya L1 is the solar coronagraph. This is nothing but you, are, you have a optical payload. You, you cover the sun with your hand, huh? mm -hmm. then see only the boundary. Yes. Like what it happens in a uh, lunar eclipse or solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. Solar eclipse time the sun will come, since diameter of the sun and moon are almost the same. Yes. So it, it can perfectly cover. Once it covers, you can see the edges. No? Edges. The edges become brighter. So the solar coronagraph is like that only. So it, it has a very perfect made disk which will cover the uh, sun. Then it will continuously look at around the edges to see so solar flares. So when the solar flare, we call it coronal mass ejection. If this happens, this can look at it. It can also deeply study it because it's spectrally steady. Yes. So this information we will get in advance. Then second is when such ejections happen, lot of particle will come out of sun. Yes. That is ionized uh, items, mm -hmm. basically protons and electrons. And this will travel to earth. Yes. And this will tra this travel will take much longer time. Ne? In few days it will reach Earth. And once it reaches Earth, because of Earth's magnetic field, this all these particles will get trapped. Mm -hmm. And this will create the so uh, electromagnetic storms, like the wind storms that we see here. Yes. Electrical st magnetic mm -hmm. and storms can be created. This will create a high impact on transmission lines. Mm -hmm. It can create impact on satellites. Because if the, such an event happens, you cannot even do a rocket launch. Rocket launch or very critical observation in satellites, etc. has to be stopped. So, understanding this is very important. So, we have instruments to measure this uh, solar, solar corona. Then, the, when the particles are traveling, it will pass through the L1, L1 point. Yes. So, our uh, Aditya L1 is waiting there with some instruments who can measure the particle. So, he can correlate the particle ejection with the corona event and create you know good understanding of it. How much of the quantity will come when this ejection happens, etc. So this is the essence of the, the L1, Aditya L1 machine. This you are expecting in long this year? This Same, similar time, June, July time frame. Mm -hmm. No, we have not yet collaborated with NASA. NASA offered that if you want uh, training, we can provide you training okay. and also flight to International Space Station, etc. That offer is around the table. We are yet to make any decision. Okay. Commercial exploitation is available now, available launch vehicle you give for commercial launches, yes. which we will continue to do through NSIL. Yes. So we are going to make these rockets uh, by NSIL directly and use it NSIL directly. Yes. So this is essentially the part and there is more demand coming for launches. So NSIL will service that part. Second is using our satellite for commercial use. So we are, uh, all our communication satellites have been given to NSIL. So they will commercially use them for leasing the transponders etc. And we will be building satellites for commercial entities. One of the satellites we already built for Tata Play. Yes. Their satellite is built by and launched by NSIL. And future also we are going to launch for some more satellites for commercial. Yes. And uh, third is Earth Observation also. We have a plan to build the commercial fleets which we are under discussion. Okay. So these are the, and of course NSIL will do a lot of commercial work in the handheld devices etc. for various communication systems position services and that's activity is also going on and uh, NSIL will also be ground station for users so this is another business vertical coming <coughs> now coming to startups etc it's a different story it's not for commercial purpose it is to help a startup to come up in space sector so there are a lot of startups there hundreds of them in various fields launch vehicles satellites applications etc so we have created a new entity called in space which is an authorizing hand holding promoting working together person, team, which will help uh, the startups to connect with the ISRO 
provide a framework on which for them to operate and make use of it without any issue then uh, this row centers will help them okay this is one then second is we will also have plans to connect with the financial support system uh, and make use of some of these row products uh, made available to them use launch pads what we have to be made use of them use our test facilities in case they need all of this are being done done yes and we are doing one more thing we are doing also technology transfers okay. to industry startups uh, if it is a commercial technology then we transfer it through nsil mm -hmm. if it is a technology which is needed for startups then it is done through in space so there are different modes of technology transfer See, we signed a contract, not we means it is in NSIL, mm -hmm. New Space India Limited as a public sector undertaking, signed a contract with the HAL as a prime contractor to build the five PSLVs. Yes. And here this is a manufacturing contract, end-to-end mm -hmm. -end production and launch of the satellite, launch vehicle and you commercially use them. Okay. And they will have to pay the money for us. Okay. okay, so five of them has already signed, the work is just starting and uh, HAL is taking other contract, other companies who are traditional teams that are building our rockets like L&T and other manufacturing companies, they will become part of this uh, uh, consortium. Yes. And in another 24 months time, it's already a few months are over, yes. they will build the first satellite launch vehicle, PSLV, and launch it commercially. So this is the plan. And Bell is of course uh, yes. doing a lot of work for us in the ground stations. Yes. Uh, then uh, our ground equipments, uh, our uh, networks, then handheld devices, antenna, all this uh, Bell is already a part of our uh, space sector. Sure. They, are, they have a lot of stake in defense as well, now you know it. See, international collaborations are of many kind. One is uh, we have traditional collaboration with almost, uh, with an agreement, return agreement. We have 64 agencies and nations, okay? Yes. That many MOUs are in place. But then uh, I can tell you that uh, what is actually delivering some outcome are only few, not many. Some of them are for purpose of uh, engagement with discussion, commercial uh, you know, meetings, sometimes some supply of some items, purchase of some items, etc. There shall not be any problem. For that we have signed certain MOUs. But the real technological collaboration happens between many nations. And one of them is uh, US. We are building a satellite together, NISR. NISR is a satellite which we are jointly built. Yes. And we had a lot of collaboration earlier. We had worked together in Chandrayaan-1, Chandrayaan-2, Mars orbiter missions. A uh, lot of scientific work we did together. Yes. Then we have engagement with France, CNES. We collaborated to build satellites, payloads, rocket engines, etc. Yes. We had a collaboration with Russia where we used a lot of support for design of our rockets, yes. testing of our rocket parts in MV internals, cryogenic engine, lot of materials and technology procurement, etc. We did uh, with them. Yes. We had collaboration with uh, Japan, yes. Germany, okay. Uh, then uh, with uh, Sweden. Then, of course, uh, like this, uh, Australia. Of course, Australia. Australia, Australia is a recent uh, yes, addition where they offered that they will collaborate with this row specifically in terms of uh, making use of some funds from them, which will be made available to startups and companies in India yes. for joint development of space systems between Australian companies and Indian companies. So, this is a special offer to them by Australia to Indian companies. So we introduce them to Indian companies yes. where they can develop joint job or develop some systems which will be useful both to Australia and India. So this is a special engagement. Otherwise we have uh, traditional connections itself. See, academic institution has been always there. Yes. For example, Indian academic institutions, including IITs, has been very dominant. You know, ISRO has a lot of benefit from Indian Institute of Science. All of our earlier leaders came from academic institutions connect fully, yes. like IIT Mumbai, IIT Kanpur, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Chennai, IIT Mumbai, and Indian Institute of Science Bangalore. This were and IIT Delhi also. These were the traditional institutions which supplied the early leaders of ISRO. Yes. Of course, slowly it spread out. Slowly spread out. And yes. what we did is we connect, created space technology cells, STCs, in 
all these major IITs, IIT. where we have an annual grant to them and they do some sponsored research within the IIT. So this is one way. And then we go, went into a next step called uh, space uh, technology incubation facilities. Yes. And uh, such a started in NITs and next generation IITs. Mm -hmm. Then we have another program called Respond program. Uh, this Respond program gives you uh, a proposal, uh, somebody, a research fellow or a faculty apl applies, then it will be reviewed and we will fund it for certain period, certain period for problems that are defined by ISRO. Yes. So this is another academic engagement. So we have a large amount of academic engagement research projects uh, totaling around 300, 400 of them running currently with the various educational institutions. That is the only job of ISRO. Yes, sir, yes. We continue yes. to work on new technologies. Yes, sir. If I if I count that we are currently Some having uh, almost 1,500 new technology work is going on in different centers. Yes, this is the summary of all the technology development work. They do so many areas. We work into materials, new materials development, nano materials, uh, new chemicals and the formulation, new energetic materials. That means fuels. Uh, energetic material. We work in st energy storage systems, uh, nano materials of human work on electronics, new devices in RF and microwave, then uh, into propulsion new technologies like electric propulsion, uh, nuclear thermal propulsion, semi cryogenic propulsion, lock smith in engines. Yes, then, uh, then in uh, uh, if you go to rocket side additive manufacturing technology domains in metal, ceramics, high temperature materials, uh, then artificial intelligence in so many areas, in every area artificial yeah. intelligence, there is nothing called artificial intelligence yeah. research, yes. artificial intelligence in materials, artificial intelligence in mission design, artificial intelligence in data processing, uh, so artificial intelligence in security, in manufacturing how to apply artificial intelligence, non-destructive evaluation how to apply artificial intelligence, how to do artificial intelligence in mission design itself, so AI is a large uh, domain. We also developed a lot of technology for satellite, which includes lightweight structures, uh, new food, uh, no, bus structure for satellite, then new electronics architecture, then new power bus architecture, new fuel, new battery technology, new fuel, um, what you call the energy management technology, which includes the, few, the solar cells and others. Yes. Then uh, we also work on deployable mirror systems, optics, system. We have a large amount of technology in optical systems, which in, we have a laboratory for electro-optical systems, where they work on new generation optics, both uh, refractive and reflective optics. Then uh, our space application center is working on deployable antenna systems, deployable mirrors, then um, high resolution detectors, CMOS devices, then they are working on atomic clocks, uh, traveling wave tubes in different frequencies, digital amplifiers for uh, high transmission, high power transmission. We work on radars, phased array systems for uh, multiple radars. It's basically, basically strength, both the space-based and ground-based radars. Like that, you know, I can go on telling the list, there is no end. Yeah.